Hey everybody, it's Captain Kyle and I'm here with the new Studio Series 86 Transformers the movie Ultra Magnus. Yes, from the movie this is big. I mean, it's Commander class and it's supposed to be very true to the Ultra Magnus as he appeared in the 1986 Transformers the movie, the best movie, of course. Peach out all that base shit. I'm gonna break him out, go through him piece by piece, maybe even bring in some other bots for comparison, and we'll see how cool this mother actually is. Be right back. All right, so it is a very nice box. It shows a very nice scene that looks like a painting inspired by the movie. And on the back, of course, there is him in his robot mode and his vehicle mode. They even show him loading up some cars, which is kind of neat. And we may just do that just to see how it goes. But however nice the packaging is with a picture of the Autobot shuttle on the uh, top there, I don't know which in space it could be anyways. We're gonna break this out and see what's inside. Now it does come with a backdrop as many of these Studio Series ones do. And in the back, we have instructions, which will prob probably be somewhat important in this shitty piece of paper, which is never important. So we're gonna get rid of that. Nothing more in there. So he comes packaged, as you can see, in his robot mode, not in vehicle mode, as I thought he might. This is the backdrop. It shows the uh, Autobot shuttle, one likely after the main battle. This is when they're trying to escape and go help fight Unicron. And Blur's trying to get the Dinobots into the shuttle. It's not working out very well with those bozos. But uh, there he is. He also has a very large package over here. He's got a large package, so what do you think of that? But let's get him out. Now this is not plastic repackaging because the plastic that they said that they were returning to apparently is the strings, or are the strings rather. I could do grammar, which will make a mess all over the table, but again, easier to cut through than sawing through those paper strings. But my initial impression of this figure is he looks pretty dang good. So we are going to explore. Now, after removing from the package, he's got a little, one of those elastic things here and a little piece of uh, cardboard insert. And he seems to be missing his ears. Maybe that, those are in the, uh, this little package here. But so far I can tell you that he stands about head to toe, eight and three quarter inches tall. If you go from his shoulders, more like nine and a half. So he's got big shoulders and a large package. Yeah, he gets a lot of action on Tinder. All right, so he has a ton of accessories in here apparently. So let's see, this appears to be a shoulder missile launcher. So let's put that on there. Another shoulder missile launcher. Two shoulder missiles, which plug in, but they don't actually have launchers. So, which some people who are G1 purists are like, oh, but they should have launchers. But no, it's a pain in the ass when they go flying across the room. So I'm not too concerned. All right, he's got two ear things. So I wanna make sure I'm putting them on the right way. Looks like the easy way to put them on is to turn the head and then push them in. Ooh. And I just noticed that they can actually come apart, but you can plug it back in. So it's not a bad thing. So now he has his little antenna ears. I just wanna make sure there's nothing in this paper before he dispose of it. He does apparently have two different guns, which we'll take a look at in more detail later. But in the meantime, we'll just put one in each hand. Say hello to my little friends. And he's got a lot of blast effects. He's got this base one, it's kind of large got three of these long cone ones, two of these, and then one of these. So a lot of blast effects. I'm not a huge user of blast effects, but they're nice to have. But they end up filling up a lot of the cases that I use. And of course he can be on the back row. Ta-da. So let's check this guy out. He is, uh, as I said, pretty tall, commander class. Let's see how he does. First of all, can he do a full Jean-Claude Van Damme? Well, he's got these hip plates that come up that actually allow him, yes, he can do a full toes up Jean-Claude Van Damme. He ends up leaning forward a little bit, but nobody's perfect. He also does have some ankle rockers. They don't go a ton, but you can spread his legs somewhat for a wider stance. He can kick forward, 
Now he's got this plate here, so if I move that out of the way, he can kick a little higher in the front. He's got a butt plate, though, so if you move that out of the way, he can kick all the way back. But if it's in place, as it's supposed to be, it does interfere with him kicking backwards. And it pops in, snaps into place there. So he's got a butt cover. He can obviously do side kicks. He can also bend at the knee, which is nice. There is not a lot of swivel. It looks like it's a very, not a simple ball joint, but there's a joint in here that's kind of like a ball joint that allows a little bit of swiveling, but it doesn't swivel entirely. There's no swivel, so that's a little disappointing, but still a little better than the G1. Now, can he twist at the waist? Apparently he can. Right above his butt plate, he can twist. So that makes for some dynamic posing. Free and clear all the way around. His arms can go all the way around. And I've already demonstrated that it bends at the elbow, can go out straight. It can kind of go off to the side, but then you got this weird underarm thing. So I think that's more of a transformation thing. And swiveling. He does have a swivel. It is right below this blue block, his shoulder, that it actually swivels. So that is a nice thing. Now his wrists do turn, but because of this, it makes it a little more difficult to twist the wrists all the way around. But he also has articulated fingers. Well, he's got the bottom three articulated. He can point. Damn it! what are you doing? The thumb doesn't move, but it's an open hand. And you can still hold the gun even if his hand is open. So I do like that articulation, though having the lower three together means no flipping the bird. The missiles here are on plates that can flip out. So just, you know, be aware of that. It's not a flip changer, but it's, they can flip out, but they're, I don't think they're supposed to. I think the plates flipping out are part of the transformation. The head can turn. He can actually look up quite a bit. He could be flying through space and it goes slightly forward so he can be like, Daniel, Spike wasn't your real dad anyway. Now, if you don't recognize that line, that's because it was never in the movie. It's from one of my shorts. Speaking of shorts, check out my shirt. One of my popular shorts is Megatron is worse than you thought. And he says, are you ready to talk about your cars? Extended warranty. Well, now we have shirts for that along with two other shirts. One is why you really watch Toy Spotlight. And there's another one, since I always say, have fun and good hunting. He says, shh, I'm hunting toys. So those are available. Go to the shopping tab on the channel and you can also check out the uh, link in the description if you wanna go that route. But okay, so let's get back to handling this now. See what I did there. Overall, a pretty poseable figure. You can check out the front, very, uh, very Magnus-y. If you look at the back, he doesn't have a ton of kibble. That looks pretty good. One thing I just noticed is if you push back on his arm, uh, that can go out of place. So rough handling, I would not suggest. This is studio series. It's not necessarily meant for someone to throw across the room, but it still looks really good. Now we are gonna get into the vehicle mode, but before we do that, I did bring a couple guests here. I wanted to put him next to the Siege. And as you can see, he's a little taller than the Siege version. Um, definitely a little bit different in design, though of course they all have the Magnus elements. The Siege from shoulder to uh, foot is eight and three quarters, and this guy's like nine and a half. So there's a little bit of a height difference, but you can see. And also these are more animated movie accurate colors compared to the Siege one. However, they are still muted compared to, yes, I bought out the original G1. Well, this is a, a reissue, I believe, back in like 2003, I don't know. It, it's still an old toy, but uh, and definitely it's got some dust on it. But you can see the difference in the coloration, this Ultra Magnus, which is from the Diaclone line originally. This is the design from the Diaclone line. I think it was Powered Convoy? because I think Optimus was Battle Convoy, this was Powered Convoy. You can see, again, similar design elements, but this guy is like a brick. You can move the arms, that's about it. You know, much better posability on this one. So thank you for appearing. Now uh, go handle something. Not that, you'll go blind. Okay, so again, very cool. I have also noticed that he does have light piping. So there's a uh, clear area here 
to let the light shine through, and that will make its eyes glow blue if the light hits it at the right angle. Might not be that visible to you guys right now because the lights are pointing in this direction. But when I turn them around, I can actually see the lights glowing in his eyes. So something that you must experience on your own. But he is, uh, yeah, overall, very cool. Now, I am gonna refer to the instructions because this is a studio series and they have a tendency to be rather clever with stuff. And you can add the blast effects to his guns. And if you remove a missile, you can make it look like he just fired one. So kind of cool. Oh, and one more thing before we get into the vehicle mode is I'm just a soldier. Let's see how we can access the matrix because he has a matrix. And interestingly, it looks pretty much like in the movie. You lift this up and these pop open and he's got the matrix in here, which is supposedly removable. It is in there firmly though. So there it is. It's got a little crystal in the front to make it look like it has the power, though it's actually hollow from behind. And uh, it's a matrix. Pretty cool. And it pops right in there. So I do like the fact that the chest opens just like in the movie. So that's a nice detail that they added to this guy. So far, I'm liking this Ultra Magnus. Hosable, has a matrix, very animation accurate. The, the lack of swivel in the legs is a little disappointing, but otherwise, he's pretty cool. And he actually feels pretty heavy. I don't know, there might be a little bit of die cast in here, I'm not even sure, but he feels substantial. All right, let's remove his weapons and let's do vehicle mode. I do suspect, however, that he probably does not have the Optimus mode, the white Optimus mode, which is a shame. Wow, that was a lot. So here we are with Ultra Magnus. He rolls pretty well. Very cool looking car carrier, I have to say the cab. Very clever the way you assemble it. It's not like already a cab, like with Optimus and such. So, and I gotta straighten out his smokestacks, but very clever transformation. A lot of things that looking at the instructions, I was like, really? And you know, it took me a while to figure out what they meant. But he rolls pretty good. And there he is as a car carrier, fully armed. Weapon storage, you can put his guns attached here, pointing backwards, so maybe they don't look as much like guns. But the missile launchers, <laughs> can't do much about that. But well, looks very much like the G1 toy. Now, one thing that I wanted to do was see if some cars could fit in here and the ramps to go down. So first, let's try the Studio Series Hot Rod. Can't fit. Oh, the Titan Returns Cup. Maybe if we take off the Target Master, because that wasn't until later. Doesn't fit in very well. Siege Auto Trooper. Well, Siege style. No. And here we have Mirage. And he doesn't go in either. So, I have to say, not very good on that level. Can you put Hot Rod on top? Sure. It shows maybe Jazz in the picture going up the ramp, but uh, yeah, really hard to tell. So whereas he is a car carrier, I mean, you can kind of put the cars on him, but they can't necessarily go up the ramp. And so he can carry a couple cars. They're not exactly locked into place, but you know, it's not a real car carrier. And you can very easily dump them off the top. The only thing I failed to do was pull it out a little bit. Shut up, Logan. So that he can actually turn and be a functional car carrier. So he does have a swivel, but it does not detach. I'm not sure where in the instructions I missed that, but he does pull forward a little bit so that you can actually turn him. And he can travel with cars and turn to the left and right and not just go forward. But again, you can stack cars on him. Just them going up the ramp. It's a little too narrow. It's a shame though. I mean, in every other way, it's really, really good. Overall, I have to say, I like this guy. The transformation is pretty dang complex, which isn't a horrible thing, but it was like 43 steps, lots of little things, like these covers here, these just popped out. Not for rough handling, but everything plugs in. It's 
It's clever, very clever. And overall, I like it. Just like the original Ultra Magnus, not the perfect car carrier. But actually, some of the transformation actually was reminiscent of the original, which is kind of cool. So this guy is 13,000. Oh, he's not. Sheesh, why do I keep saying stuff like that? Why, why, why? I can't handle that now. Now this guy lists for $89.99, which is, you know, pretty steep compared to the original. Well, it was like 25 bucks, 20 bucks. But I am uh, overall pretty pleased and impressed with this guy. I don't know how I'm gonna fit him into my Ultra Magnus case because I have a lot of Ultra Magnuses. I mean, this one and this one and God Magnus from Car Robots and some from Prime and yeah, there's a lot. But I definitely think this is a great representation. I really enjoy the Studio Series 86 stuff. Great engineering, great homages to the original Transformers. So I would recommend him. And while you're mulling over this failed leader, very temporary Matrix holder, but he's just a soldier. He's not worthy. He's a little worthy. You can check out this video over here, which is a third party version of Ultra Magnus that you may enjoy, but a little smaller in scale. And of course, I really hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I enjoy making them. We'll see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting.